It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Let's get out of here. I. Hey guys, yeah, it's the end of the world. <sighs> and the real coffee, two scoops of hallelujah, one scoop of praise the Lord. So you know what? Let's look at Hanukkah. Yeah, I like it, Dr. Barry. Let's go. Let's go. And everybody else that's looking at Hanukkah, let's go. Yeah. I got a lot of uh, studies, notes here, and uh, I'm probably going to make a couple different videos. Maybe I'll repeat myself. Maybe do a live stream or two. I want to come back and do a calendar, but just wanted to talk openly, just really open and just say a couple points here, okay? So the first point I wanted to say, I've got some notes. I'll just read off this for now. I'm not going to get to everything. My mind's still spinning on a lot of these things, but uh, Hanukkah. Feast of Dedication, Festival of Lights. And this is one of the things that uh, Dr. Barry said. Uh, so Enoch is de means dedication, and it's tied to, well, Hanukkah is called the Feast of Dedication. And uh, it's it's really the what happened was in, in the Book of Maccabees, uh, Antiochus came in, took their temple over, took it all away, and then they came back years later and restored the temple. They, they took it back. Uh on the, on the same day, I believe it was, there was a three-year gap between when Antiochus came in and did his desolation, and then they came back and, and took it back. They fled to the mountains, and they came back and, and solved, solved the problem, basically. But um, it's also called the Festival of Lights. All right, so I've got some light studies. I went into all these verses here, and this is not really the theme of this video, but, you know, what, the first thing that, that God said was, Let there be light. And there was light. Genesis 1, verse 3. And when Jesus came into this, uh, the world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then in Matthew, he says, you are the light. So there's this whole light thing. And everybody, you know, everybody that's had a dream or a vision or experienced some sort of a heavenly thing, it's always about the brightness of his light. And heaven's going to be bright. And we've got light and light. And this is called the Festival of Lights, which is tied to to Christmas, right? Like the it's around the same time as, as we would say it's Christmas. And guys, who cares about this whole debate on Christmas is uh, satanic and all this kind of stuff? Forget it. Just skip over that. I'm just saying it's the same timing of uh, of, uh, of this uh, Festival of Lights. And what do we do at Christmas? We put up our lights. And it's, it's it's quite interesting that God says, I am the light. I am the light of life. Things like that. So it's tied, a lot of ties to the identity of Christ to this Hanukkah time, okay? And we've got this Enoch tie to this timeline. And he's the first guy that was taken out. So let me read some more notes here. So H2585, that's Strong's, and that's that's the name Enoch, and it means dedicated. And, but it comes from the other word in Strong's, which is H2596, and that means to dedicate or to train up. And um, uh, Lakesh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. That's another word that is um, taken from, well, it means the word take, but it means, uh, and that's the strong words, H3947. And that's in that verse when it says Enoch was taken. He was Lakesh. Actually, let me let me get the actual sound of this. How do you say this? Strong's H3947. Lakesh. 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 Okay, Lakesh. Okay, so Enoch was Lakesh. That's Lakesh. Out of here. Let's get taken out of here. But the thing is, uh, when you read in the Blue Letter Bible here on this website, it's it's another word for basically marriage. And it says to take, receive, take away, fetch, bring, get, take out, carry away, married. So there is a there is uh, in my app here, this eSword app, there's 900 verses, over 900 verses in the Old Testament when it uses this word, like, <laughs> And it's talking about you know, taking away or taking out or whatever, snatching away. But it's often used with the whole wife thing. Like he, he took her and he made him his wife, made her his wife, excuse me. So it's, it's and that's what we're doing. We're waiting for the bridegroom to come and get the bride. It's like, it's like a bridal word to take, to snatch, to fetch. Um, it's everywhere. Like I said, there's over 900 verses in the Old Testament with this word in it. And very weddingy, very bridey. And so Enoch was uh, even in Genesis 2 2 when it says he took her from the rib right I'll read it in the rib which the Lord God has taken from the man that's Lakech, uh made he a woman and there's things like when yeah people were getting married Lakesh Lakech. okay all right so that's that so again we can we can spin off into studies so basically I 
I think it would be good to do a large study. We can even you can leave your comments too on on what you think is connecting with Hanukkah. There's the um, there's the equinox too, and that's connected with the feast of dedication and John was it chapter eleven I think. But anyway, let me go back to my notes. Um, this is just more of an open ended like I'm looking at Hanukkah, and we'll probably get more things coming. But where did my notes go here? Okay, so I said that Enoch walked with God, and he was like, and then Hebrews eleven five. It says the same thing. By faith, Enoch was translated or taken. This is Greek now in the New Testament. So the Greek is uh, the New Testament is Greek, and the Old Testament is Hebrew. Uh, in general, by faith, Enoch was taken, translated, that he should not see death. That's what we're waiting for. We're waiting to be taken so that we don't see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before he was his translation, uh, or before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Okay, so that's that. There was three other verses that I thought were very interesting. The word dedicated, there's not many of them in the Old Testament, that this word comes up, H2596, which is connected with the word Enoch, okay? So we've got Enoch equals dedicated, and the word dedicated is H25, oh, is it six? Sorry, it's, yeah, H2596. And I, I, I mentioned how there was two verses that were parallel to each other, okay? So there, here's another area in the Bible where, again, it's doubled. Uh, what's with this double thing, this two, right? This is annoying. Uh, this, is, this is interesting. I, I, I see the connections, and it's like, ah, I hope we get out of here in 2022. So we've got this double, again, in 1 Kings chapter 8, 63. Okay, so I said again, 1 Kings 8, 63 but also 2 Chronicles 7, verse 5, and it essentially says the same thing. Solomon's dedicating his temple. How many bulls does he sacrifice? 22,000 bulls was dedicated, which is the same word that is connected to Enoch. So we've got this Enoch connection. We've got this 22,000 connection of the bulls. We've got this temple connection because Hanukkah is the rededication of the temple, essentially. So we have temple. We've got dedication connected to Enoch. We've got 22,000 bulls mentioned twice in the Bible, and here we are in 2022. I think it's a pretty interesting connection there. What are you going to do with that? Why couldn't he have just sacrificed 23,000 bulls or 21,000? Why the 22,000? That's a lot of bulls to sacrifice. That's a lot of bull. Okay. Anyway, the other word that uh, we found here at it for H2596 is to train up. So that's another definition of this word, dedicated or to train up. So we have dedicated or to train up. And the, uh, that other word is found in Proverbs 22. Why? I Here we are in 2022. So, and this verse is train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So again, we've got Proverbs 22 talking about training up a child. And again, we've got the other ones, verse Kings 8, 63, and 2 Chronicles 7, verse 5, talking about sacrificing 22,000 bulls and dedicating it at the temple, which is connected to Enoch, which might be connected to our 2022 Hanukkah escape. Hanukkah is around, if you're going with, assuming the calendar is correct, it's around uh, December 18th to 26th, more or less, okay? So that's what we're looking at for now. And December 21st is right around the middle. December 22nd, 21st, right around the middle, right around that, what is it, the solstice or the equinox or whatever. Uh, and we got a new moon, I think, on what, December 22nd-ish. And that reminds us of some other uh, verses. Let me get it. Amos 8. Before I read Amos 8, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Temple. Temple, temple, temple. So, um, interesting how Hanukkah is a temple-themed uh, feast. Amos 8, when will the new moon be passed that we may sell grain and at in the Sabbath? So that's Amos 8, verse 5. It goes on to talk about the pride of Jacob. Jacob was a 22nd patriarch. He was in 2022. And then it goes on to say this, Amos 8, 9, that I will make the sun go down at noon and I will darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. Uh, lamentation, yeah. The um, thing about that is I will turn... Christy brought this up. I thought this was a really interesting point. 
In Leviticus, when he instituted the, the, the feast, he wasn't instituting Hanukkah back in Leviticus. I think it's uh, 23 here. Let me, let me find it here. Hanukkah came later, right? So, but the feast of the Lord, yeah. So Leviticus 23, verse 2, he's talking about the feast of the Lord. Then he goes on to talk about Sabbaths and Passover and the Feast of First Fruits, Feast of Trumpets, Feast of Atonement, Feast of Weeks, Feast of Tabernacles. He's not talking about Hanukkah, though, when he's talking about the Feast of the Lord. So here's an interesting point to consider. I will turn your feasts into mourning. Um, Hanukkah, could that have meant, what, is, is this what he's saying? Like, like, like things like Purim and Hanukkah that, that came later? that weren't quite the feast of the Lord as he wrote them in the Old Testament. Yes, they're historical events that happened because God intervened, but maybe he was saying that in Amos when it says, I'll turn your feast into morning. So just consider that. I think that's an interesting uh, thought. So there is way more things that I was tackling today, and I was like, oh, my goodness, I don't even know what to say, where to start. But um, that that's where I'm at. I'm thinking Hanukkah is an interesting thing to consider and we, some things that we can study further on this is we're going to try and develop a bit of a timeline soon. Like, you know, this has been point, this is the beginning, this kind of thing. Uh, there, you know, consider that there might be some gaps before and after the trip, you know, to, to make some puzzle pieces uh, make sense. Um, we've got, we can go with light studies because God says, I, you know, he is the light and, and we have festival of lights. We can um, go with Enoch, uh, further studies into Enoch and what his story was um, and, and the word dedication. We can look into temple studies because, you know, uh, Revelation 3, the Church of Philadelphia, talking about, um, you know, let me see the actual word here. Yeah, my favorite church, Church of Philadelphia. But in verse 12, he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go out no more. Okay, and on and on it goes. So it's talking about the temple. I'm going to make uh, him a pillar in the temple. And then later on, we've got Revelation 4, verse 1 come up here. I'm going to show you some stuff. And um, anyway, that's it from the faithful church. Man, everything always points to Church of Philadelphia. I think it's really fantastic. So I think we've got a lot, a lot of things to study, a lot of things to consider about Hanukkah. So guys, get tight with Christ. You've got to become a believer. Believer and believe that Jesus died for your sins and enter into a relationship with Jesus. Uh, just like this word, lakach, he's coming for his, in theory, it's almost like we are his bride in a way, and he's coming to, to take the people that just simply know him. And and just like that verse in, in Matthew, I, depart from me, I never knew you. It's kind of like an intimate word. And so that's what this whole thing is. Get to know Jesus, enter into a relationship with Jesus. I've got the basic salvation versus how to start, how to enter into that relationship, how to get saved, quote unquote, how to become born again, that kind of idea. And then, uh, yeah, it's so important. That's the most important thing ever. Okay, guys, so I'll see you soon. Go, Jesus, go. See in the clouds one day closer. Talk soon. Bye.